In this video, I want to talk about building your own little quick survey or registration web page using FileMaker's new WebDirect technology that's part of FileMaker 13. Now, in order to use this technology, you must have FileMaker Server 13 installed. So I've gone ahead and logged on to one of my test servers. And as you can see right here, I have a little database that allows me to input contact information and submit registration. Now to be very clear, I'm not going for any sort of style points here with this database. I'm not trying to show any sort of sophistication in terms of types of data that I'm collecting. The point of this video is to show you the mechanics of setting up this database to allow for seamless and easy access by a public user using a web browser through WebDirect so they can submit data straight into FileMaker and they won't even know they're using FileMaker. So first off, before we get into the mechanics of the instant web publishing part, let me show you how this database works. I'm going to drop into layout mode here. I'm going to select layout right here and go from browse mode to layout mode. What I've got are global fields here. Now if you don't understand what global fields are or basic scripting, I highly recommend that you look into purchasing my FileMaker Pro 13 video training course, which is a very inexpensive investment and it's available right now. So the global fields allow us to capture a registration but not submit it until the person actually presses the submit button. At the time they press the submit button, it runs a script which goes through the process of creating a new record in our registration database and then simply moving the data over from the global fields into permanent text fields that are part of the database. What's the point of the global fields? Well, if someone only inputs part of a registration, then we don't have partially created records in the system. We only create new records at the time the person says submit registration, at which point we get a complete record of information. This just keeps things nice and clean. Also, because we're using a multi-user solution on a FileMaker server, and these global fields are blank, there's no chance that any logged in users would ever see any of the other users' global values. Global values are session specific in a multi-user environment. So now that we've covered the basics of how the database is constructed, how do we set it up for use with WebDirect? Well, first off, we have to have a web browser and we have to have the IP address for the server. Now, what's important to note about these addresses is that at least my experience thus far is that the FMI and the WebD component of this address, at least on a Macintosh server, is case sensitive. A lot of times when you're putting URLs into a website, the URLs are not case sensitive. But at least my experience with FileMaker Server 13 and WebDirect, it's been very case sensitive. If you just type this URL like this, you're going to get the entire list of available WebDirect databases. Here's our registration database right here. I can click it like this and it comes up. Not a problem. Now, for future reference, I can copy this URL like this and use this URL as a reference if I want to send someone to this survey. Now, I can input my information here. Once the information is complete and filled out, I can simply press the Submit Registration button here, and I get the completed registration thank you dialog right here in the center of my screen. This, of course, is a script step, and it's completely customizable. I hit OK, and my script runs the exit application script step. Now with WebDirect, that sends you back to this home page. Now it's important to understand, if you're interested in customizing or changing this home page for WebDirect, this can be customized and changed. So you need to check your WebDirect documentation and you can actually customize the look of this page. So how do you get this set up? To get this to work, you need to make a couple settings correct. First off, when I open this file, this file is set up automatically to open as a guest account. So I've got that turned on here, which also means that in my security settings here, the guest account system right here is enabled. Not only that, I've set the guest to data entry. And if I take a look and edit this, it's set for the data entry only privilege set. But that privilege set also has the FileMaker WebDirect extended privilege 
enabled. This is super critical. This has to be turned on. If it's not, it's not going to work at all. That's very important. So that is a critical piece that you need to make sure that you're going to get WebDirect to turn on with guest access. Now we have an admin account and that allows us of course to manage the database under the hood. I have WebDirect enabled for it and of course FileMaker network access enabled so we can access it remotely across the network. Pretty straightforward there as well. Once again when you're exiting security FileMaker wants you to confirm that you know the access. Now I'm happy to give this file away to give you a head start in building this and using WebDirect to capture information for yourself. One additional area to keep an eye on. Don't forget to go down here to sharing over here to configure for WebDirect and take a look at this right here. Make sure that you take a look at these options here. You see what accounts are set up for access to WebDirect. Again my guest account is set up as is my admin account. Because of this, we're all set and ready to go. Now when you download this file, keep in mind it's set to automatically log on as a guest. So when you get the file initially, you're going to want to hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Shift key on Windows to make sure you get a chance to enter the admin code. Otherwise, it's going to go straight into Guest Access, which won't give you layout or script or security control for that matter. I was holding the Option key down just now. I'm just going to put in admin, no password. And now I'm in the system. I can go to show toolbar and I can go to layout mode. Now I can jump around layouts right here and I can actually see, go back to browse mode, I have a table view here and I can actually see the data that we've been collecting. So this is a great layout to keep an eye on as data is collected. This is the layout that the users see when they log into the system. Now keep in mind there's a couple little small nuances with the startup script when WebDirect fires up. When WebDirect fires up it's going to run this startup script right here. It's going to go to the correct layout called registration. It's going to hide the toolbar which makes sense. I mean there's no reason why anyone on the web should see the toolbar right here in FileMaker. I mean they wouldn't know what to do with it. They're in a browser and they're filling out a registration. Why should they see that? The other thing that's kind of neat here that's part of WebDirect is the ability to hide the menu bar with one script command. FileMaker was really thinking ahead when they put this command right here in the product. This command is specific to WebDirect. It only works with WebDirect. I can tell that this is the case because if I go up here in scripts and I select show compatibility, I can actually go down here and say WebDirect. You can see that right here and it highlights. If I select any of the other products in here, iOS or anything like that, it grays out. This function is only compatible with WebDirect, which is slick. So it actually hides this menu bar here at the top as well. So it hides this menu, it hides this information here, so the only thing you see across the top is the browser navigation bar, which you always see, and then you see the website beginning with this dark rectangular section right here. Pretty straightforward. But it obscures all the navigational points where the user could get into trouble. So pretty slick. So if you have any questions about this file, or if you have a suggestion, feel free to email my team at support at rcconsulting.com.